hey guys uh, welcome back so um, hope you all are doing well so in this uh, particular video we will uh, discuss uh, risk in banking sector okay so uh, like there are different type of risk which is uh, part of banking business so um, here we are going to discuss uh, these particular things in detail and uh, i already did a video on uh, risk management mcqs so after this video you can watch that one so you can test your preparation and uh, if you like the video so please uh, do share with your friends and if you are new to my channel please uh, do subscribe so guys um, whenever we talk about risk so it is uh, further categorized among two part one is systematic another one is unsystematic and um, the uh, narrower category is like market risk liquidity risk default risk operation risk and uh, regulatory operational and uh, the different different one okay so here we will uh, discuss these particular pointers in detail and um, uh, like uh, whenever you talk about risk so risk is generally defined as uh, the uh, we can say it is a possibility of loss or when you study risk in banking or finance so it is something like uh, some uncertainties or uh, we can say um, uh, like uh, with these particular uncertainties that organization they generally face uh, some uh, losses in the future okay so the possibility of loss is generally defined as risk so uh, guys i hope you uh, like so many time you read about the basel norms or the other provision which is taken by um, rbi like uh, the prompt corrective actions or the uh, different different measures so here we will discuss these particular pointers in detail and uh, we will talk about risk okay so as i told you risk is generally defined as uh, a possibility of loss and it generally made a uh, it generally make a adverse uh, impact on your business okay so it is defined as the possibility of loss that uh, may arise due to various uh, uncertainties it can be like market situation it can be any uh, war condition or it can be any uh, operation related issues and all so with these particular uncertainties you generally uh, being a organization or uh, any banking business or any corporate house they made some losses okay so uh, uh, these uncertainties are generally part of uh, losses or uh, risk okay so like in banking let's say if there is some problem with the operations so uh, for that particular time being bank will made some losses so like uh, if employee went on a strike or even like system failure or even if like there is a high inflation in the economy or some changes made by uh, rbi so similarly these are the different different uh, uh, causes for uh, these particular losses so these uncertainties are generally part of risk okay so in banking situation the uncertainties in uh, banking operation may affect profit of uh, a bank adversely which means like that particular entity is making some losses okay so like whenever you talk about the uh, type of risk so we have number of risk which is involved in banking business or banking operation so like uh, credit risk i hope you heard about this one so if uh, your uh, borrowers those who took loan from your bank they made default so that is credit related issues legal is something like when uh, regulatory uh, bodies they made some changes and uh, due to these particular changes so uh, there is a adverse impact on the profit of that particular organization so that is legal risk okay operational you know like there is a failure in the system as i told you about the employee strike and all okay uh, so there are so many risk which is involved in the banking system or in any uh, business entity so these risk are further categorized among two part between two part so first one is uh, systematic risk another one is unsystematic risk okay so like whenever you study a risk you will find two type of risk one is systematic which is unavoidable in nature which has a broader impact okay like uh, recession situation like world war situation or any other condition so which generally affect uh, the entire economy or uh, the entire world economy so that is a part of uh, systematic risk okay so it is basically we can say it is uh, non controllable in nature or it is unavoidable in nature okay so like covid 19 situation is generally part of your systematic risk 
Unsystematic risk, they are uh, peculiar, uh, like they, they are, uh, they generally affect to a particular person or particular organization or a particular industry, okay. So like operational risk is generally part of your uh, uh, unsystematic risk. So we can say it is uh, controllable in nature. So we can control um, uh, that unsystematic situation. So if your employee went on strike, so if you fulfill their demands, so you can easily control that particular one or even like if there is a system failure so you can repair that particular one okay so unsystematic is generally controllable in nature so they are avoidable in nature we can say okay so here we have a definition for systematic and unsystematic systematic risk it affect entire market as i gave you an example of covid 19 or the situation of recession so which is generally categorized under systematic so because these are unavoidable in nature you cannot control the situation of covid 19 likewise or even you cannot control like being an individual uh, organization you cannot control the situation of uh, inflation or being a country you cannot control the world world war situation in all okay Unsystematic, it is unique and uh, peculiar to a firm or uh, an industry. So as I gave you an example of employee strike, so these are avoidable in nature or you can control these particular situations. Okay. So uh, the further chart here, you can see uh, the further categorization of systematic and unsystematic risk. So systematic risk like market risk. So if that entire market is facing that particular issue and due to this particular issue, businesses they are generally making losses so that is market risk so market risk that generally include like um, equity risk commodity risk interest rate risk or uh, the, uh, uh, the the currency risk so that is generally part of your market risk we will discuss these particular points in detail then interest rate risk again which is part of market so if there is a change in interest rate by uh, the governing authorities like central banks and all purchasing power parity so which is something related to your uh, domestic currencies uh, purchasing power <coughs> so like <coughs> so like it has a uh, broader impact it generally impact to entire market okay so if your uh, the, the value of your uh, local currency is going down so that means uh, uh, there is a high inflation in the economy so uh, we can say uh, the value of your economy's currency will goes down and uh, uh, in international market as well, like if you compare Indian rupee with dollar or uh, if you compare uh, rupee with uh, euro, yen or pound and uh, some other currencies. So the if value of our domestic currency is depreciating, so it means currency that generally represent the strength or the reserve of any specific economy. So it means that there is a fundamental issue with that particular economy. Okay, so it's a broader issue. Being an individual or being an organization, you cannot control that particular situation. Okay, so uh, unsyst so these are basically uncontrollable, unavoidable in nature. If you talk about the unsystematic, so this is something related to a specific business. Okay, so we can like with certain changes, we can manage that particular one. Liquidity risk is when an organization is able to convert their asset into cash. Okay, so converted into cash equal to liquidity. So, uh, if any organization or any bank, they face these kind of issues, default is like again credit risk, okay. So, if uh, the uh, borrowers, they are not returning that particular money, financial again, it is, it can be related to a individual or a specific organization, okay. So, I hope you get the basic differences between systematic and unsystematic risk. So, please do remember these particular pointers. So, these will definitely help you. Uh, toward your understanding of this uh, particular topic which is risk in uh, banking or even some other organization okay so systematic risk are unavoidable in nature as i earlier told you because they have a broader impact okay uh, the situation of covid 19 the situation of recession the situation of world war um, unsystematic they are controllable in nature like situation of employee strike or system failure or any other problem okay non reducible through uh, diversification you cannot diversify uh, the systematic risk if there is a problem of covid 19 so it will impact the entire world or if there is a problem of uh, a recession so it is very hard to control that particular situation so like we have these particular examples uh, if you talk about the unsystematic so these are avoidable in nature they can be di diversified okay 
and like labor strike, managerial changes. So these are generally example of unsystematic risk. So this was the broader uh, classification of risk in uh, any organization or in banks and all. Now we will deep dive these particular pointers like what is market risk or what is liquidity risk, what is inflation risk, what is interest rate risk, what is reputation risk. So we will discuss these particular points. Okay, so we will start with market risk. So what is market risk? So let's say being an investor, you invested some money in the market and market is behaving adversely as per your position. Okay, let's say you buy a shares of some company, but the shares price of that particular company is going down. Okay, or you invested your money in uh, properties. So the properties prices, let's say uh, uh, the, the prices of properties are going down. So you let, let's say you invested in some commodities like gold, silver, and the prices uh, that generally behaving in an adverse manner. Okay, you invested in currencies, then the market is generally performing just opposite of your position. So that is generally part of your market risk. There are so many reasons behind the market risk. Okay, so market risk is uh, the risk of losses on financial investment caused by adverse uh, price movement. So as I gave you an example of property prices, commodity or equity or even uh, this currency and all. So market risk is the risk that the value of an investment will decrease due to changes in market uh, factors. Okay, so demand and supply. Market factors are demand and supply. So let's say you buy, let's say um, you uh, buy uh, 5 lakh rupees gold on uh, MCX. So that time uh, the gold prices was supposed at 50,000 per 10 gram. Okay. So now after your uh, uh, placement of order, there is a some situation due to these particular situation, the prices are coming down. So let's say after some time it become after one month, it become 40,000 uh, per 10 gram. So you made a loss of 10,000 rupees uh, per 10 gram in this particular investment. So like even it can be um, in shares, you invested shares of some company and due to some reasons or due to some problems, some regulatory changes or some like uh, adverse business condition for that particular firm. So that firm made losses. So that means their share prices will also come down. Okay. So that is these kind of losses are generally part of market risk. Okay. I'll, I'll discuss these pointers in detail as well. So first one we have currency risk. So now what is currency risk? So the risk that uh, exchange rate will uh, go up or uh, possibly down. So as like these, um, basically we can say the market is behaving just opposite of your uh, portfolio. Let's say you buy a uh, US dollar. So you buy USD, US dollar and um, USD INR. You, you buy USD INR where you paid um, for one, uh, uh, for you, let's say for one US dollar, you paid uh, 82 rupees. After some time, like your profit, when will be your profit? So this will be your profit situation when it the prices will uh, go uh, beyond 82. And if it will come down, so if it will come uh, beyond, like below 82, so it, it, will be it will be a loss condition, okay? So let's say after some time the prices become 80 rupees after your like after you took the position so prices of uh, USD INR comes uh, come down to uh, 80 rupees so this is the loss situation so these kind of situation due to market for factors the prices of uh, uh, USD INR currency pair uh, come down so that is means you are making some losses from this particular investment okay so that is your currency risk similarly equity risk as well so equities are shares okay so let's say you buy um, abc companies uh, shares you buy 5 lakh shares at the rate of um, suppose that uh, 2100 okay so after some time after uh, like let's say after two days there is a problem with the indian market or problem with this abc market so the prices started coming down to uh, 2000 and it is expected to goes down till 1500 due to some uncertainties or some problems with the Indian market or with this ABC company limited. Okay, so this situation is generally known as uh, the um, losses or the equity risk. So you like being an investor, you made a loss. 
So that loss or that possibility of loss that is generally known as uh, equity risk. Okay. So basically, whenever you try to understand this one, so it means like whatever like market risk is whatever like let's say you have a buy or sell position in the market and market is just behaving opposite of your position and due to this particular situation you are making some losses so that is generally known as market risk it can be currency it can be equity or it can be commodity as well as i gave you an example of gold okay so apart from this one important risk is inflation risk i hope you remember the con concept of real income so i already uh, taught you this uh, real income concept so real income is the actual income you earn from that particular investment okay and formula is interest interest minus inflation so the so formula is interest minus inflation okay i'll first explain you real income then you'll understand the inflation risk okay so let's say you invested 100 rupees at the rate of um, 7 percent per annum so after one year your investment uh, your investment grows to uh, 107 rupees okay so after one year your investment or your money grow to 107 uh, rupees okay but this is your nominal this is your nominal income this will known as nominal income now a real income is basically inflation adjusted income so here you minusing uh, you have to minus or you have to separate the inflation rate so let's say during this financial year the average inflation was the average inflation was 5 percent okay so uh, uh, like you have to minus 5 so your actual income from this investment is rupees 2 your nominal income is 7 but your actual income is 2 rupees so this is a normal condition okay now what is inflation risk so like you are while you invest in this particular investment so when you made this particular investment decision so you are expecting an inflation of 5 percent then you calculate it your real income will be two from this particular investment but if the situation grow and there is a high inflation in the market let's say inflation grow by seven percent now what will be your real income your real income will be 107 minus 7 or 7 percent is your interest rate and 7 percent inflation rate so your real income is zero in this particular case not only zero even sometime it went in negative as well so let's say inflation grow by 10 percent during that particular financial year okay so now 7 minus 10 so your investment your investment went into negative by 3 percent okay so you did not made any profit from that particular investment so these kind of situation are generally known as inflation risk i hope you understood this particular one okay so the potential for inflation to increase the prices of goods and services such that uh, un, um, undermines uh, the value of money so what is generally going on these particular cases as well so inflation concept is uh, rise in prices hike in prices so as inflation increase every rupee you own by a smaller percentage of goods and services so here you are owning 107 rupee in normal case and if you minus inflation you will still have a profit of 2 rupees but by if inflation grow by 7 percent you are not getting anything from the, that particular investment but if inflation grow by 10 percent you made a loss of 3 percent from that particular investment okay so the value of your money is generally uh, going down so hope you understood this particular case okay and guys uh, if you like the concept please uh, do like the session and do share with your friends and if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and do mention in comment section if you have any uh, uh, queries related to these let's move to the next one so next one we have uh, liquidity risk so liquidity means cash converted into cash or cash or equivalent which we already read in our previous videos okay so liquidity uh, risk occur when an individual investor business financial institution cannot meet its uh, short-term debt obligations okay so when any organization they um, they won't be able to uh, meet up their uh, short-term debt obligation they won't be able to uh, incash their assets or uh, they they won't be able to convert their assets into cash so that particular situation is generally known as a liquidity risk okay so when we uh, read uh, the different different ratios so we talk about the solvency ratios so where we generally talk about these particular things in detail as well okay 
so liquidity when uh, we can in simple word we can say when any organization they are facing cash crisis and they won't be able to meet their short term debt obligations or they won't be able to convert their assets into a uh, uh, cash so that situation is generally known as liquidity risk next one is the uh, interest rate risk so interest rate risk is so like this is the uh, when there is a changes in interest rate so that is that 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 is definitely going to uh, uh, make some adverse impact on uh, the uh, bank business or any other one so i'll give you an example with the bank so you'll understand let's say like you understand uh, what is the basic uh, function of bank so bank generally work for borrowing for the purpose of lending okay so borrowing for the purpose of lending is the primary function of bank so let's say there is a bank who borrow 100 crore rupees at the rate of uh, so at the rate of uh, 5% on an average 5% so do, that at that time when they borrow this particular money so let's say there was high rate of interest in the market so let's say the that time uh, they are lending around 10% 15% so they they have a specific margin but while after this collection of money from the investor and they made some commitment ki we will pay you up 5% per annum for on this particular investment while uh, they invested or they lended this particular money to the customers due to some regulatory compliances or changes or due to some over liquidity in the market so the, the rate of interest that comes down from 5 uh, let's say from uh, they are 15% to 10%. So previously uh, they the usual investment or the usual lending rate was 15%. Now due to uh, uh, there are excess liquidity in the market or any change made by government or uh, the central bank. So the rate the interest rate or the lending rate that generally uh, goes down to 10%. So notionally that particular bank they made a loss of 5% from this kind of situation. Okay? So that is generally known as the interest rate risk okay so this uh, is a risk arising from adverse movement of uh, interest rate during the uh, period when uh, the asset or liability was held by the bank so they this is the liability product for the bank so they borrow money from the public now when they are lending that particular money so there is a decline in rate of interest due to uh, market factors okay so that situation is generally known as interest rate risk interest rate risk is the risk that arises for owner uh, from uh, fluctuating the interest rates you know okay i hope you get this particular one let's say you made a uh, investment in bonds so during your invest or you some equities or some other investments so during like when you make your investment decision the rate interest rate was very high okay the rate of return was very high but after your after you took the position uh, suddenly there is some changes in the market factors and the prices or the rate of interest that uh, coming down so that kind of situation is generally known as interest rate risk okay i hope you uh, uh, understood this particular one as well now next next one is default risk or credit risk this is very simple in bank it is uh, basically npa non performing assets so the risk uh, to bank when uh, there is a possibility of default by borrowers to uh, meet its uh, debt obligation let's say being a bank you lended money to a uh, abc corporation okay uh, let's say you lended uh, 50 crore rupees to this particular organization so after some time this organization or the business of this organization uh, uh, got failed okay so they won't be able to return that particular money so they'll become npa or they'll become defaulter so that kind of situation is generally known as credit risk so credit risk is more uh, um, a uh, prevalent in case of loans we can say or like it is basically for lenders who lend money and so whenever we lend being a organization being a individual whenever we lend that particular money so there are some risk involved in that particular one hope this is clear next one operational risk so if anything that is um, making a uh, an adverse impact on your uh, operations so let's say there is a employee strike for uh, two months or for two week so that means during these two week we did not make uh, any product we did not serve any uh, services so that is eventually going to uh, uh, make uh, uh, an adverse impact on your uh, business profits and all okay 
so this these kind of situation this this can be by any reason like it can be uh, due to uh, the internet issue or it can be by uh, there is a communication gap there is a miscommunication or there is a some uh, like some uh, cultural events some external events like riots and all these particular problems okay so it uh, is a risk that arises due to failed uh, internal process people or system or from external events it include many risks such as transaction risk okay so there is a like like uh, being a banker you did a wrong transaction okay so that that may affect the business of uh, that uh, the profit of that particular business okay employee strike communication risk so some false communication some miscommunication documentation risk okay cultural risk some cultural events which generally affect the business of uh, that particular entity external uh, events some kind of uh, rights some kind of uh, events which generally hamper the overall uh, uh, operation of that particular business or uh, the system failure like the computer failures or like the process failure so which is generally part of your operational risk guys please uh, do remember these particular ones so many time examiner they generally ask question based on these one like they'll give you the employee strike is part of which kind of risk so you have to remember these particular things okay so anything which is uh, hampering the overall uh, operation of any organization or any bank that generally or due to this particular uh, situation bank or that organization is making any losses so that is only part of your operation risk i hope you get this particular thing next one a uh, strategic failure so this is again like in case of startups or uh, even not only startups in a big organization or in bank as well so strategic like when you made a strategy and that strategy like let's say uh, your board man board of directors they came with a xyz um, uh, strategy and they launched this particular product so while they made this particular strategy they did some research and development they did some advertisement or uh, they launch that particular one they test that particular one so there are so many cost let's say uh, to launch this xyz our strategy we spend 5 crore rupees and this was a complete failure let's say that uh, xyz product didn't uh, did not do not work in the market like customer did do not accept that particular product so that means you made a loss of 5 crore rupees so these kind of problems or like let's say your strategy or your plan was good but while you execute that particular one so during the execution phase there is some problem employee are not understanding that particular product or there was some lack of awareness so due to these particular thing you made some losses so that is again part of your strategic risk okay so it arise on um, account of adverse business decision uh, improper implementation of these particular decision are generally part of strategic risk so very simple uh next one reputation risk so if like uh if you remember the case of yes bank so when that there is yes bank faced so many problems uh, uh during 2019 20 so that like even today people do not like blindly trust on uh, yes bank and not only yes bank uh, due to these uh, failure of private banks so there is a less faith on private banks in india due to these kind of cases okay when bank they want be able to uh, like when bank they generally face liquidity risk and all or default risk and all okay so if like the business that generally work on mouth publicity most of business we can say and if there is a bad impact or if uh, like your existing customers they do not satisfied with your business so they'll do some bad mouth publicity so that is definitely going to harm your business okay so if you have a bad reputation due to any causes so that will definitely going to um, impact your profit or the future of that particular business so it is the risk that arise from a uh, negative uh, public opinions so that is like as i gave you uh, there are so many cooperative banks or the, even there are so many organizations as well so who are uh, generally uh, Uh, who uh, like they generally lost the faith of uh, the consumers or the public uh, uh, like they have a negative public opinions and due to these particular thing they have to made a like they they face a huge loss in the market as well okay next one is regulatory risk 
so i already told you about regulatory risk so regu when the regulator made some changes let's say um, for banking it is um, rbi okay reserve bank of india for insurance it is airda for uh, pension funds it is pfrd for uh, securities market it is sebi so if they are coming with some new guidelines some new changes and due to these particular changes or uh, uh, these norms or guidelines they, they, like bank they have to fulfill the guidelines of rbi and due to these particular norms banks they are making some losses okay so that is generally part of your regulatory risk so if rbi changes uh, suddenly the norms of minimum capital requirement from 500 crore rupees to 5000 crore rupees now bank have to maintain that 5000 crore rupees which they can lend to the customers okay so eventually they are making some losses so that kind of problems Let, let's say if rbi increase slr to 20% so now bank have to keep more reserve so that means they are making some losses okay so these kind of situation so regulatory risk is the risk that a change in law and regulation will uh, materially impact a security business sector or a market so these kind of problems they are generally part of regulatory risk i hope you get this particular thing so similarly in case of insurance or some other business as well okay so that is generally part of regulatory risk so uh, guys uh, uh, our next video will be based on money supply i hope so many time you heard about the m1 m2 m3 m4 or the mrs system okay that is uh, used for india's currency printing system so in next video we will talk about the overall money supply and uh, the different type of money and the concept of money okay so uh, basically uh, in this particular video we uh, generally talk about the uh, what is uh, we, we talk about what is uh, uh, the risk and uh, what are the different type of risk which is involved in banking business i hope you get these particular thing uh, clearly so still if you have any query or if you have any uh, problem with uh, these particular concepts so you can mention in comment section i'll get back to you okay and uh, if you are new to my channel please uh, do subscribe and do share with your friends and uh, guys uh, do watch these videos and you can make your notes and for pdf you can uh, join my telegram channel so uh, after uploading this particular video i'll mention in comment section so you can uh, join the uh, telegram channel for the pdfs okay and do watch uh, that uh, mcq session based on uh, risk in banking sector so that with the uh, that particular one so you can also test your preparation or you getting these particular topics clearly or not okay so this is it from my side very soon i'll come with a new video so where we'll discuss uh, money and its type and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the uh, currency printing system in india okay so hope you enjoy if you like please uh, do share with your friends thanks for watching this video stay tuned